Now, I really particularly like this drawing. It's not a Jewish drawing, but it really gives you an idea of the way we understand from an astrological point of view what's going on in the universe. People don't think about it because we're on a ball that's moving. It's moving, first of all, it's turning. It's turning, but is it turning? It's turning relationship to other objects in the heavens that are also moving. So it's a very relative, everything is very relative. But these things are moving in circular formation, like cogs in a wheel or cogs in a gears, like gears, I like that better. Like an inside of one of these old time watches or watches, the inside of watches, where you have all these mechanisms which are circular moving around and around. That's the same thing that's happening in the heavens. Let's look at where we're at with, uh, this is an absolutely fantastic book, and I recommend that everybody should read this book. Let me move this up out of the way, get us back in a position where we can listen to the words of this scholar, uh, Rabbi Yaakov Cronenberg, who really put a tremendous amount. And I think that as introduction, just to say this, this is a lost science. It's a lost understanding of where we are really in God's world. Because we don't really think about the fact that we're on a ball which is constantly moving and constantly changing and everything is changing around it. And it's working not only that, in sync. But what we are looking for is the cause of this. That is Hashem. That brought all of this, all of this machinery of the heavens towards us. And astrology is the idea that there are different midos and moods that affects us very strongly at different times of the day and different times of the of the year and the month. To be able to see all of these cycles and to understand how they impact us emotionally and physically. So this is really what astrology is all about. The difference between Jewish astrology and the astrology of the Gentiles is that they don't have the upper the upper idea. They they are able to understand well, let's say, what's going on with the different uh, with the different planets themselves, what's going on in the heavens. But what causes that to be, there's a zero there. That's not their interest. And subsequently that gives way to idolatrous practices because then you get the concept of, well, what does Mars actually do? Do I need Mars? I try to get Mars in here without really understanding that there is a master behind all of it. And we saw that in the concept in the concept of the 12 combinations of the name of yud ke vav -Ke, which shines through the constellations and the stars and the planets towards us because we are our part of this tremendous, tremendous gear system. Let's come over here and as he has been talking, and we'll just pick up the last place where we were. So he says, so he talked about before how the combinations of different spheros uh, go together. Uh, we had this concept. Let me see if I could get it out quickly. I don't mark it well. That's my problem. So I have to page for it. Just give me a second. Let me come over here and get back to this drawing. Get in there. Here it is. This is the drawing I wanted to show you. And we're coming back to it again. So first of all, you have uh, different sets. These are part Sufi. These are part Sufi, which are systems of refracting light. Now, the one in the middle, the biggest one, is really a little bit different than the other ones because it has uh, a, a head, which is just one on top of the next. It's not quite exactly the same because that's in the most panemistic part of the refraction of the light of of the nothingness of Hashem. So it's very difficult to understand. There's an energy there that we do not understand, and this is called the ratio of the low isi, the, the unknowable head, because in Panemius, as we go deeper and deeper and closer and closer to Hashem, so we get these kind of, uh, of drawings that understand how the light processes. But what we want to point out here is not the details of this. That's not our subject. This really is to give us the idea that there are three lines. There's a middle line, which is called Kedatim. Now, he doesn't have all of them at that point. doesn't show the Malkus, but here's the Malkus here. Kesser, Das, Tiferes, 
and you sewed and mouthfuls are called kadatim like that this is the right line which is called chokhmah chesed and that's how it's called chad, uh, it's called um hachan the left line which is composed of bina gavura and and hod is called bagha so all of these flow together and the ultimate recipient is this place down here called malchus now understand that teferis das keser and Yisod are all in the line bringing Shefa down the middle. This is the line of the balance, where if you listen to the Shiurim on the Sifra the Tzniuta, then you see that there's a concept of what I pronounce as the Maskala. Maskala means the balance scale, because that's actually what's happening here. Now let's come over and understand that we're going to be talking about the connection in the middle line between, between Teferis and Malchus. So he says, so let us go on and see how the Teferis and Malchus unite. Because Teferis and Malchus are both in the middle column, as we just saw. One is air and the other one is earth. So what do they have in common? I mean, just think about it, the earth. So, and they, that is Teferis and Malchus, unite by what they receive from the fathers. Who are the fathers? The fathers are Chesed, Gavur, and Teferis. That's where we understand them. In other words, they unite through Chesed and Gavur, Chesed and Gavura unite to Ferris and Malchus. So it is Chesed and Gavura which caused them to come together, he says. But Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, and he's doing a lot with the Ramak here with Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, doesn't explain here how it works. So let's leave this matter for now, but again, it is the same idea. Now, I'm not sure what he meant, but let's go on. Now, Rabbi Moshe Kordavir was going to go back into the matter of the planets and constellations, and this is important for us. And when you meditate on the different seasons and the elements that are within them, and the order of the month, months, you will find out that there are some little differences between them. There are going to be opposites within them. And Rabbi Moshe Cordover was going to explain these differences now and how it works. For example, let's say the season of Nis Nisan, which is spring, and contains three months, which are April, May, and June. That's the beginning of the summer cycle. The constellations of which are Aries, Taurus, and Gemini actually dominate during those times. In other words, the Hebrew months of Nisan, Er, and Sivan are the letters Yud of God's name, and it is the element of water, represents the Yud of God's name. Now, yeah, good, again, we have four seasons, four letters of the name of Hashem. So let's go over here. He said the name, and it is the element of water. Let me read that again. Are the letter Yud of God's name, and it is the element of water. So the letter Yud in God's four-letter name represents water. So the first three months are going to be water months. And then the second, which is the summer, contains the Hebrew months of Tammuz, Av, and Elo. In the civil civilian calendar, he says it's July, August, and September, which we're in that cycle right now. The constellations of which are Cancer, Leo, and Virgo. This represents the first He, oh, excuse me, I said it wrong. First, He in God's name, the Yud, K, Vav, K in God's name, and it represents the aspect of strength and judgment, which is the element of fire. In other words, the first season is the period of the year when everything starts to grow and blossom, which is the Yud, which is water. This is the nature of water. It grows things. Then the second season is the first He of the name Yud, K, Vav, K which is going to uh, represent the element of fire because the summer is when the sun is at its peak of strength and there's a lot of heat. So the summer is hot and dry like fire. Then you have the autumn, which contains the month of Tishrei, Marcheshvon, and Kislev. In the civilian calendar, it will be October, November, and December. The constellations of which will be Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. Now, this represents the letter Vov, the third letter in the name of Hashem, in God's name, which is represented by Teferis, which is in the element of air. And again, the air is the milder time of the year, which is the opposite of the season represented by the Yud, which is where the growing size comes. So he says this is the milder type. It's going to be an airy time when there's a lot of air 
and the leaves are blown off the trees due to the wind, etc. That's what we see. And Rabbi Moshe Kor the Vera continues. Now, this is a whole thing about where where did Rabbi Moshe Cordovero come from? Obviously, it's the Cord the Cordoba, and it's a Spanish name. It's where he comes from. He comes to a place called Cordoba in Spain. So that's why he's called the Cordovero. But exactly when he came to Eretz because he was the teacher of the Uri for a while. And uh, the re took over from where he was and, and then really outgrew a great deal of what Rabbi Moshe Cordefer was doing. But I don't know much about his, his life, where he came from. Maybe you should look. And the final three months of a month, month season is the season of Tevet, which is the fourth season of the year, which is the winter. And it contains the three Hebrew months of Tevet, Shvat, and Adar, which are January, February, and March in the civilian calendar the constellations of which are Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. This is the winter. This is represented now by the last hay in God's name, which is represented by Malkuls, the element of which is earth, and earth is the coldest of the elements, so it is the element of the winter, which is the coldest season in the year. Now, before we go on, just remember that what we're talking about to a great extent are the placements of the tribes, the four tribes. You'll see how we're working the number four here. Each one has to do with a letter of God's name. Maybe that's going to come out. It's going to be something significant as we go along. Let's read this next paragraph. So this is how the remark Rabbi Moshe Cordovero explains why each of the three months periods of the year starts permutations starts permutations-wise, with a different letter of God's name. Each one of them has a different aspect of the Yud. One is the first season of the year is the Yud. The second season is the He. The third season is the Vav of Hashem's name. And the last season is the He of Hashem's name. When why it is a specific letter for that specific period. So he says that the three months of spring start permutation-wise with the letter Yud because the letter Yud represents water. And the first three months of the year are the months of the spring where the water is flowing, which is the season of growing, and crops grow with the help of water. All the ripening and fruition comes through water. And the second, the second three-month period in the summer, then you have over here the permutations of three summer months are going to start with the first letter, hey, in God's name, because that, he indicates, he, through that, he indicates heat. It indicates fire. And the months of summer are fire months, when the earth is the hottest in comparison to all the other seasons of the year. And then you get the letter Vav. That letter Vav is the third letter in the name of Yudke Vavke, which begins the permutations for the three months of the autumn, which are the third month and is the, in the element of air when things are blowing. Now, this is the season where everything starts to cool off. There is already going to be some water in the air. And in fact, in Israel, it doesn't normally rain in the summer. And that is why everything is dry, so dry and hot in Israel in the summertime. So in the autumn, the moisture is going to be begin, to begin. And the heat eases a little bit. It's still going to be hot, but not as hot as during the summer. The air, which is heated by the fire, which means that it is heated by the sun, is now going to cool down a little bit. So, these three months of the autumn are ruled by the letter Vav, which is the element of air. And air also connects between the summer and the winter. So, it's in between. In other words, it's in, in between time. Just like it makes a connection between fire and water. And just like the spring connects between the winter and the summer too. And then you get the last season. What's that last season? Last season is winter. And it consists of the last three months of the year. And permutation-wise, the three months of the winter start with the last letter, hey, in God's name. The winter is represented by the element of earth, and earth is the coldest of the elements. And that is why the permutation for each of the three months of the winter is going to start with the final letter, hey, in God's name. And the last, the last letter, that's that last letter, hey, in God's name, indicates coldness, emptiness. And then you get to the spring again, 
but then it is not as cold as it is in winter, because the cold of the spring is the cold of water, which is not as cold as the element of earth. And since the earth is dry, things are going to get a little moist in the spring, and crops are going to start growing. So we'll stop here. This is Baruch Fleischman, Tikkun Elevator Kolo, with this book you should buy. It's available on Amazon, I think. Uh, astrology, cosmic science, Jewish astrology. That's the important idea. This is Baruch Fleischman, Tikkun Elevator Kolo.